Absolutely gorgeous. You are not meant to be opening these up. These are meant to stay in here forever. Oh, we gotta figure out how, how, how much this weighs. How much does it weigh? How much does it weigh? How much does it weigh? What are we doing, grams? Grams. She big. Hi guys, so today I gotta make a ring. I made a prototype, and the prototype got accepted as the design. So we're gonna go for it. It's a very pretty ring. Uh, a men's ring. It's approximately six millimeters wide and one and a half millimeter wall thickness and a nice little hammered texture. And we're gonna do this in 24 karat gold. So we have to adhere to a price point, which is important. And we're gonna try to do a really simple band. So I think I have to start with a whole nother bar of gold. The scraps I have are not sufficient to make the bar necessary for this, so we're going to go open another bar. Here's the bar that I'm going to be opening up today. We got a nice little assay. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. You are not meant to be opening these up. These are meant to stay in here forever, but we got shit to do, so here we go. As is customary, we have to use the Tono Clippers of Doom. Ah, see this essay has no has no warranty break. I decided to upgrade to the to the bigger, even bigger toenail clippers. There we go, perfect, beautiful, Arr. love it, love to see it. That's dense. You smudge it to fingers. Perfect. I don't actually need the full bar for this. I think I need about half. I dug out my little uh, charcoal block. And this is the fun part, huh? Ah, squeeze. Yeah, perfect. And we got half. Half. I just love the half piece. Perfect. So for this design, I'm gonna basically replicate that one which is 0.22 ounces, so I need twice as much, 0.47. That's more than twice as much. That sounds good. 16 grams right there. I'm gonna bring out the fire. Oh, it's ugly. So I guess we'll just have to hammer it. It's ugly, but it's a lot more like the shape I need it to be in, so I'm just gonna melt off some of those features. You know, the features. There's lots of them. Huh. I'm just gonna hit it with the fire again. A little remelt. This side looks much better. Let's go melt this side. Looks good. So this is a six and a half by seven and a half. I gotta bring that down to 5.3. So we gotta bring it down to 5.3, and then we'll squash it out to a flattened rectangle, and then we'll build the ring after that, and that'll get us to the dimensions that I need. So I hammered that down a little bit more, and I got a nick on it. So to take that nick out, I'm just gonna remelt the surface again. 
It was like a nice fresh remelt anyway. I think I'm going to start sending this through the rolling mill. It's pretty good. It's a little banana shaped, but that'll work itself out. Now that I'm seeing this, this is one of the biggest gold pieces I've ever done. Alright, there it is. 5-3 square. I'm just going to straighten it out and then we'll start squishing it to make it long and skinny. To make this flat, I'm just going to hit it on the anvil a couple times. i do one more kneel. Just to make it nice and soft, ready to roll some more. Beautiful. So now that we've uh, got the 5.3 millimeter squared, I'm going to just flatten it on one axis so we can get a kind of dispersed 5.9 by 1.8 looked good last time so hopefully this plays out a little bit on one axis and then just elongates on the other here we go banana So you can kind of see that the roller has a little texture on it, but, but what really happens is that the sides are getting squished out. They take on a lot of texture, the compression texture, so I'm going to hammer that out just before it gets a little bit too exaggerated because I do want just solid straight square walls. So I'm going to take that down on the anvil a little bit, and then I'm going to turn this not to banana. We're just going to hopefully try to get this to be a straight bar. So we definitely have a nice straight bar now, but it's got a lot of texture to it, so I'm going to kneel this again before we go any further. Yeah, it looks pretty good. We have 5.7 and 3.0. We're certainly getting there. 2.3 by 5.8. Get some magic numbers here. Almost six and 1.8. I know that's going to be enough and not too much. And we definitely can make a size eight ring out of that. Looking good. Got to kneel that again. Look how everyone asks, how strong is it? Well, after you work hardened it, it's, it's pretty ready to go. It's pretty strong. But this nice uh, wall thickness is really going to make this ring super strong. And it's going to get work hardened. So 
We're gonna have a nice strong man's ring here. Let's get one last anneal before we bend it up into a circle. Sometimes I just like the map gas because it's a little faster. Just love that sound. Let's just show you. Ooh, look how soft it is. Love it. And we're done. No way, we still have to fuse it. Alright, my notes say that we want to finish up with a size 11. Yeah, we want to finish up with a size 11. But to do that, we have to basically start out with a size 8. Because all the work hardening is going to take it up a couple sizes. So I think I'm just going to cut the rough ends off. And then we'll size it after that maybe with a second cut because this is i mean this is way too big you see i'll bring you in look at that just we got too much junk in the trunk to reduce the amount of dust i produce i'm just going to cut with the toenail clippers for this cut because this is doesn't matter as much there's no waste when we cut this way there we go. Just can't use those round ends anyway. Put them in the jam jar, of course. For later. Perfect. But now that I got square ends to work with, it'll be a lot easier to size it up. Cut a little bit more. Which side to take from? This side. Just gonna keep cutting off the ugly end. Here we go. We got a bladed cut sitting at around a nine. So when I make those uh, saw cuts, we'll probably remove enough that it'll get around an eight. And then I have to mate them. And we can saw cut a couple times. It's not a tragedy to do that, but I just love these big hunks. These big chunks coming off the bar are just way easier to handle and reclaim than little saw cuts. Because saw makes so much dust that's so hard to bring back in. We go into a size 8 to finish with a size 11. The, the reason we do that is it's easier to fuse something chunkier. It's not going to fall apart as much when we fuse it. So, And then we'll just thin it out when we work hard in it. It's just the kind of way she goes. Treat myself to a brand new blade. Wouldn't that be nice? You know it's fresh when it comes out of the package new. What are we using? We're using Swiss product. Sure. I trust you. Let's get some lubrication on there. Yeah, that's a pretty good cut. Alright, cut one done. Let's get number two. Ugh, this really hurts the hands. God, that's exhausting to hold that, huh? Alright, there we go. Got it, though. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna mate pretty well. Like that, for sure. I really hope that's the only cut I have to make. It looks pretty good. They look like they're going to mate pretty well. I just got to flatten them together a little bit. That's okay. Definitely, definitely like the way that looks. Just going to bend these down a little bit. So they look like they're going to mate.
That looks fine. Now I'm just going to bring them together, make them kiss, and we'll fire her up. How about that? Alright, so it's like a thousand degrees in here, and I had to shut off my camera just because it says that it was going to about to overheat. So I just tapped them together. They're kind of kissing okay right now. We're going to fuse it up, and I'm going to fuse it up seam side down. I think that works better. I don't remember entirely, but seam side down like that with the seam on the bottom. So now i got to find some dust, and really I'll probably use a tiny bit of wire to fuse this up. And I'm just going to grab... Is that too much? Might be, might be adequate. <sighs> well, if there's too much, it's fine. If there's not enough, there's a problem. So there's a bit of 24 karat gold wire in there. Nothing else. Just wire and fire, boys. And goils. I'm really hoping this is very uneventful. So I know it's a little overkill, but I'm using my turbo torch. It was ST3. I was supposed to get the ST1, but Amazon shipped me the wrong one. So this is the big nozzle. I wanted the small nozzle, so that's why it's so loud. Oh, you can kind of see some steam coming off. That's the cutting oil I was supposed to clean. Gross. Don't breathe this. It says very specifically not to breathe that. You can see the wire. Can you see the wire? Yes, you can. You can see the wire. It heats up before everybody else because it's so small. But he should melt at the exact same temperature as everyone else. And he's sitting in the seam, touching both sides of the joint, so that should be absolutely perfect. I expect him to liquidize first because of his surface area. Come on there, bud. Note I didn't use any flux or any... This is not solder, this is just 24 karat gold. In the joint. And this might take a long time. So I've got to bring the, basically the whole ring up to temperature. And then it's going to melt into itself. I'm going to turn my torch up just a smidge. I'm attempting to aim this ridiculously large flame right at the bottom. But there is absolutely no way it's being concentrated in one spot. Again, I need the smaller torch nozzle for sure. And what real people use is an oxygen propane setup, a dual gas setup. I'm using a carbureted setup, just using ambient air, which is way different. So melt on the wire. to melt, but if this initial fuse doesn't take, we have a long road of redoing everything, so. Alright, I do have my first melt on the seam, and I am really nervous. Uh, I'm just kind of shaking a little bit. I mean, it looks fine. We haven't melted in the wrong direction, but this seam is taking forever to heat up. That's okay. Just keep hitting it. There we go. I got a second fuse on this side. That's good, I have the seams on either side fused. Let's see how that looks from this side. Still no fusion in the center. I'm gonna... I'm gonna do the thing I told myself I wasn't gonna do. God. I'm just gonna hit the joint directly. Joint up from the top. Even though I told myself I wasn't going to do that. Because it's very dangerous. 
because the whole thing has a tendency to melt. But we don't have to get very far. Alright, third melt. Any deformation? Yeah, a little bit. Not bad. But we got three melts on it. I would say that's pretty fused up. Yeah, alright. Whew, okay. Thank God. Huh? That's the make or break right there. I think we made it. Not too much damage going on. Yep. Oh, definitely made that. Oh, goodness. All right, here we go. There's the seam. So you can see I seam. It's definitely together. The wire in there is just looking like a bloob. But um, when the, it gets on the mandrel, that that's that seam will just flatten out. It's it's pretty awesome how that works out. And then this is structurally sound. We're ready to go. I mean, this is probably could not have asked for something better. Uh, and the visual of the seam will get smashed out with the hammering and work hardening, so no worries there. I think I deserve, a, I think I've earned myself a dinner, huh? Alright, I'm very happy with this ring so far. I've checked the joint out several times and I think it's going to be okay. We'll really figure that out once we start hammering on it, but I'm going to go jump right in to texturing and hammering out the size. So currently we, we were at like an eight-ish, whatever it was. Uh, we're gonna hammer this out. We need to go a little bit bigger than an 11, just a touch larger than an 11. One of the things I'm gonna try to avoid is to have the hammering fold in the upper rim too much. So I'm gonna start on the corner here and basically diagonally tap in the corners to give it a kind of a rounded edge just to push that down before I go on the sidewall itself. It's not really a perfect science but 24 karat gold is pretty squishy so I'm really excited for this. Look how chunky that is. This is, some, this is a good piece right here. I'm gonna start right on the seam because if that fails right away I want to know <laughs> just go rebuild the whole thing or maybe fuse it up again but yeah we're gonna start right on the scene with some texture hammering I'm going to flatten out the top and the bottom here. You can really see how the, once you add the texture, it really widens the band up quite a bit. I mean. It's playing out a little bit, which is good. You want it to be kind of a tall ring. It hasn't taken too much off the sidewall thickness, but it is squishing it out taller, which I like for sure. We're almost at a 10 now. So 
So I've got it to a size 10. It looks really good. And the sidewall thickness is still very thick. And we've widened it out for sure. You'll remember we were at, what, 5.8 millimeters wide. And now we're at almost 6.5. So we've gotten a lot of... It's a lot taller, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to sit a lot different on the finger. It's going to cover more of the finger, which is... It's good for a man's ring, right? So, I was shooting for a 6.5 millimeter sidewall. We should still have quite a good amount of thickness here. We're still reading 1.7. Um, at a specific point, we're reading 1.7 at a different point. 1.9, is that the joint? Yeah, the joint. The joint's going to be a little fatter, because uh, they added material there. And that's fine. We'll take a joint with extra material rather than a joint with less. But it's a nice even height all around. It's just that joint has a little bit thick, thicker wall at points. Yeah, it's looking good. So uh, we're reaching the point where it's not moving that much. When I strike it, it's not sizing. So I might have to hit this with a little bit more fire, but there's a delicate balance there because I don't really want to... I don't want to overwork harden it, and I don't want to anneal it past the point of being able to stop the correct size. I only need to go up one more size. So, uh, I might hit it for just a, just a touch with some fire. Get it up to temperature just just a little bit so I can get it up to 11, basically with a rubber mallet now, because the texture's in. Just wail on it with the rubber mallet. We're sitting at 10. Wish me luck. This is definitely make it or break it here. I do not want to go too high on this. I'm going to point the, point the light away so I can watch the color better. The direct light does not help you watch the color at all. And it just looks yellow, 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 and you miss the pinks and the reds and the oranges. And those are very important colors. Do not want to miss the oranges. Hopefully that's enough. Might not, might not be enough. Let's see if we get any toot at all. Oh yeah, we got a toot. We got it up to temp. Alright. So... There's our 10. Quick fire. It's not, still not malleable by hand, but I bet you the hammer I'll be able to take it down. That sweet spot in the work hardening is not squishy by hand, but I bet you the, the hammer will move it now. Alright, we got it up to ten and a half. So I'm going to do this gentle little annealing and hammering until we get just, just past eleven. And then I'm going to stop and then we'll size it with the customer to make sure it's perfect. And you can see there's a lot of texture on the top of the sidewalls there. So I'm going to take some of that texture off. There's the joint with the wire. I'm not going to worry about that yet. It's looking very nice. Love the little toots. I'm just going to try to go at this with the rubber mallet now. Well, I did not anneal it enough. It's not moving at all. Eight seconds of annealing was not enough. Heh. Just 
Still at a ten and a half. Didn't move at all. All right. Need more juice. Just get nervous, you know. More juice. More. Ten and three quarters. We're getting there. This is where a rawhide mallet would have been more useful. Counting off to 12. We're almost to 11. Um, I did one more thing and I... Well... You see, when you spin it around, it doesn't always exactly have the same lie, so... Okay, we're still working on getting up to 11. Again. That was a more substantial quench. All this annealing is giving me a good opportunity to just hammer down the mountains into the valleys. Of the texture up here on the sidewall. Which is good because that's a lot cheaper than filing off material. So now we have a really nicely textured outer band. Oh, we got a six inch sidewall there. Ah, you see when I hammer down the sides, we brought down that some of the irregularities and we're back to just above a six inch sidewall. Just fine. If we wanted to hammer that up a little bit more, I could. Kind of splay it out a little bit more. But now it's much, much nicer on the face of the top. It's butter smooth. I really like that. A little sharp edge on the inside. Just because it's like a perfect 90 degree angle right now. And the texturing is still pretty nice. I might go ahead and do the last couple rounds of sizing with the ball peen hammer again. Just because the rubber mallet is squashing down some of the texture. Just about an 11. And I'll take the ball peen to it. That's good, we're slipping past 11. Flip it over. Ah, here we go. No more kneeling required. 11 is peeking through. Go down and take that top texture off one more time. Wow. I really like this ring. This is absolutely beautiful. It's nice and heavy, too. That looks good. You get the shine on it, too, huh? I haven't had to do any filing yet. Just moving metal around like God intended. The inside's not that bad, really. It's not particularly sharp. Is the outside particularly sharp? No. The outside's not particularly sharp either. There's no burrs. It's just... It's very... It's very square. Square is not a bad thing here. Schmooshing tool, and I'm just gonna schmoosh around the inside here. Take down that 90 degree angle. And give it a 45. And that's gonna feel a little nicer on the finger. And it doesn't take any material off, just smooshes it around. That's gonna be way nicer. Hopefully it didn't make a burr. I it did. There's a burr in there now. Right, I'm gonna take that burr off real quick. Get the round inside file. Well, there's no more burrs, that's for sure. Love it. Absolutely love it. Here, I'll bring you in. I love that it's nice and square on the top, very clean. The hammer texture is good. 
There's gonna be scratches all over this thing within a month. Because it's 24 karat gold, so we're not gonna to try to be too perfectionist, but we're gonna polish it up. The polishing wheel did a really good job finishing up the top here and the inside. So I'm very happy with that. The hammer texture still looks awesome. So I'm gonna go wash this off with some Dawn and uh, we're good to go. So, let's see, how well did I do between the two of them? Silver is just incredibly shiny, isn't it? I love silver. Um, I refuse to use the polishing wheel on gold for several reasons. One of them being it's just full of silver. And I only have one. I should probably get a gold one. But this looks really nice. Uh, the dimensions look pretty similar. If anything, the sidewall on the gold one is a little bit bigger, which I like. But they're the same height, which is good. Oh, we gotta figure out how how, how much this weighs. All right. Let's see, um, how much does it weigh? 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 What are we doing, grams? Grams. 14, 13.97. Absolutely love it. The dimensions are great. I was shooting for just above a six sidewall. And we're in a 6.2, 6.12. Definitely some variability here. 614. And with the inner wall thickness is 17. It's chunky. It's good. It feels good on the finger. She big. Definitely larger than I would wear, but I'm not that large. So it looks good. Very happy. Uh, let's go take some pictures outside, huh?